thanks to General Electric, here she is again, Joan Davis. Gee, GE appliances are wonderful. General Electric, makers of the world's most dependable appliances for the home, presents Joan Davis with Jim Backus in I Married Joan. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Stevens. This is Mrs. William B. Fairchild speaking. We've never met, but Mr. Fairchild and I served on your husband's charity committee, and we became quite fond of him. Well, thank you. I'm rather fond of him myself. <laughs> well, we're anxious to meet you, Mrs. Stevens, and we'd like you and Judge Stevens to be our guests for a few days at our country place. Why, we'd just love to come. Uh, Brad has told me so much about you, society. I, I mean, you nice people. When would you like us to be there? Well, we'll be there all next week. Just come when you can. We'll be looking for you. Oh, uh, Mrs. Fairchild, um, what kind of clothes shall I bring along? Oh, just the usual things. We'll have a fox hunt, so bring a ride. And the rest of the time, oh, just cocktail gowns and formals and maybe a tennis outfit or two. I see. Well, thank you very much. We'll be there. Boy, have I got some shopping to do today. Riding habit, cocktail gowns, formals, tennis outfits. Imagine me in society at the Fairchilds. Tennis, anyone? <laughs> oh, sorry, Mrs. Tobin. <laughs> Oh, yes, Mr. Bennett. I'm looking forward to seeing you. That's right, my wife and I will be down for the week. I'll, uh, I'll see you then. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Bennett. Uh, Miss Bromley, <clears throat> I'm correct in assuming, am I not, that my calendar is clear and I have no appointments for the week? Well, yes, sir. You told me to keep it open. You said you were going to take a vacation. Mm, good. <laughs> when I get back, you're going to see a new man. That'll be nice. <laughs> Here you are. Uh, read this. It, uh... Wanted, couple on vacation to work on farm in return for board and lodging. Healthful outdoor work, just the thing for city dwellers. Stone Meadows Farm, Highway 101. Does Mrs. Stevens like the idea of working on a farm as much as you do? Well, of, of course she does. I, I mean, of, of course she will. Oh, then you haven't told her yet. No, I'm not going to tell her till we get down to the farm. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Boy, tell a groom to rub you down and give you something special for dinner. Watch it. Oh, excuse me, sir. I must be in the wrong house. I'll. Uh, <laughs> back here. It's me. Stop fooling me. And the reason I'm wearing this outfit. Well, never mind that, dear. I have the most wonderful news here. Come on, come on, come on. Sit out. No, thank you, Dad. I'd rather stand. I've been riding all afternoon. Oh, I got some wonderful news for you, too. Joni, we're going to spend our vacation in the country. Oh, Brad, just for my surprise, I wanted to tell you. You, you knew? Well, of course I knew. They called me, but I didn't know that you knew. Well, I, I called them. Oh. Oh, it's going to be wonderful lying around all day. Oh. Staying on a farm, living the simple life. Being waited on hand and foot, dressing for dinner. Not having to shave. Oh, Brad, you'll have to shave with the Fairchilds. <laughs> Maybe the three or four times. The I... Fairchilds? Well, I'm talking about, about the Bennetts. Bennetts? Yes, they own a farm, and I made arrangements for us to spend my vacation there. <laughs> oh, no, Brad. The Fairchilds called and invited us to their country place for the week, and I accepted. Well, what a ridiculous misunderstanding. <laughs> yes, wasn't it? <laughs> well, you know, there's only one thing to do. That's right, there's only one thing to do. <laughs> yeah, you'll just have to call the Fairchilds and tell them the thing is off, that's all. <laughs> oh, no, Brad. You call the Bennetts and tell them it's off. Well, now, Joan, you're being very unreasonable. You've never even seen the Fairchilds. And the only reason they ask you is that we happen to serve on the same committee on a charity drive. Well, who cares what the reason is, as long as they invited us. That's where we're going. 
Well, what kind of a vacation would it be lolling around on a farm? Well, it'd be very healthy. I'd rather be sick at the Fairchilds. Now, look, dear, I've been giving in year after year to you about where to spend our vacation, but this time I'm determined to spend it on a farm. No, Brad, besides, I bought a lot of special clothes to go to the Fairchilds. Well, dear, if that's all that's bothering you, honey, honey, you can wear them at the, at the Bennett's. It's very nice there, too. It's very fashionable. <laughs> it's very, 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 very. <laughs> Brad, you feel that strongly about it. Honey, honey, I do, believe me. Okay, I'll call up the Fairchilds and beg off. All right. Hello, Mrs. Fairchild. Uh, this is Joan Stevens. Fine, thank you. Say, I'm awfully sorry, Mrs. Fairchild, but Brad and I won't be able to make it down to your country place for the week. No, oh, something else came up. It's uh, something very important. Joan, tell the truth. That was Brad. He said to tell you the truth. Uh, to tell you the truth, we're going to a farm in Stone Meadows. What? Well, of course we own the farm. <laughs> Naturally, yes, it, it's been in the family for years. And you know how management problems come up. Yeah, absentee ownership is such a bore. <laughs> Isn't it, though? Yes. Well, thank you very much for inviting us. And Maybe we can make it some other time. Thank you. Goodbye. I told her the truth, Brad. <laughs> Joan, why did you tell Mrs. Fairchild such a whopper? Well, Our farm, really. Brad, I, I couldn't tell her we were just going to any old farm. And besides, she just took it for granted that we owned it. Well, just so long as we're going. Uh, now, now, look, honey, let's have dinner and hit the hay. Want to get an early start in the morning, first thing. It's into them people to give up that soft and easy living in town and come here and slave on the farm like sharecroppers. I don't know, but I ain't complaining. As long as we're getting our work done for less than it takes to hire a farmhand, I'm satisfied. <laughs> we ain't done a lick of work in four years. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be them, Ma. He looks kind of fat. Well, we'll work some of that off him. What do you think of her? Well, I'd say she's on the skinny side. Yeah, but she looks wiry. Them's the kind that never get tired. Remember that skinny gray mare we had? Got more work out of her than two stallions. Uh, oh. uh, Howdy. Bennett, I'm uh, Judge Stevens, uh -huh. and this is my wife, uh, Mrs. Stevens. How do you How do? do? <laughs> You want to sit and chat a while, or would you rather get started? I got a pile of wood out there that needs chopping. Well, no, you see, we had a long drive. If you don't mind, we'll freshen up. And, uh... Oh, you shouldn't ask the judge to chop the wood. That's a woman's work. I'll take you out back after a while and show you the axe. Well, I need to see it. Well, I guess you'd like to see the room you're living in, so just come this way. Mm. Yes, and I'll explain about milking the cows, feeding the chickens, and watering the pigs. <laughs> oh, isn't it great? Smell of the farm. It smells all right. <laughs> Joan, I, I didn't tell you before, but part of the deal I made with the Bennetts is that uh, we work for our room and board. What? Well, now, Joni, look, look. Believe me, we're going to love working here. Uh, I'm just dying to get started. Well, with me, it's just the opposite. I'm starting to die. Goodbye. No, 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 dear, no. Now, every year I go away. <laughs> And now, we interrupt our show for a touch of tragedy. And tragedy it is. A bitter, exasperating experience that lots of women live through all too often. The sad thing is, you don't have to gamble on the weather when you dry clothes. You can forget all the troubles of outdoor drying when you have General Electric's brand new automatic clothes dryer. And your clothes will come out of the GE dryer softer, fluffier, and cleaner. Think it over when your clothes are in the GE dryer. No dust or soot can settle on them. The wind can't twist or tear them. And the sun can't fade them. And here's an example of how much better your clothes will look when they come out of the GE dryer. These six towels were sun-dried on a clothesline. These in the new GE dryer. They're 50% softer and fluffier. 
You do less ironing, too. You can take many things right out of the GE dryer and wear them. And to save you time and work on those clothes you do want to iron, the GE has this wonderful new feature, GE's famous automatic sprinkler. You just put the clothes you want sprinkled into the dryer, and in a matter of minutes, your clothes are sprinkled just right and ready for perfect ironing. So why not start tomorrow to enjoy savings in time and work with a General Electric automatic clothes dryer? And the special terms GE dealers are offering now make it easier than ever to own one. So see your GE dealer soon. <laughs> Joan, if you hadn't unpacked those work clothes after, after I packed them, you wouldn't have to do this kind of work in a cocktail gown. Oh, swell. You brought along some jodhpurs. Why, why don't you wear them? Brad, did you happen to notice the color of those jodhpurs? Well, sure, they're red. What of it? Well, they've got an angry old bull on this farm, and I have no desire to take a ride on his horns. Oh, my God, Brad. I can get you two going to stand there all day. By now, you ought to be finished with your easy chores and ready to go to work. <laughs> Besides, don't forget to feed this mash to the hogs. Uh, now look, Mr. Bennett. Ooh. <laughs> We've had a, a change of plans. Telephone call for Judge Stevens. Oh, I wonder who that can be. Well, it must be that important telephone call. They said if they called, you'd have to rush right back to the uh, city. Oh, yes, the important <laughs> They're trying to run out on us, Ma. It just shows you how you can misjudge people. When I first set my eyes on them, I said, Ma, there's a real nice couple. And I said, Pa, that they look like the kind that a body could rely on. Well, you just relied on my body a little too much. Look, <laughs> Tony, uh, can I talk to you in private? Huh. Uh, hmm. well, what, what, what is it, then? Honey, it was the Fairchilds. They got this number from, from my secretary. What for? Well, they're on their way to their country home, and they have to pass this way, so they're going to stop off and, and spend the day with us. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, Brad, I told them that we own this house, and this was our country estate. If they find out that we're just working for them, we'll be ruined social. Joni, I told you, you never should have lied in the first place. Well, i got to think of something quick now. Uh, I know it. I'll tell him that we own this property for miles and miles around. And the reason that we haven't fixed the place up is because <laughs> it's an antique. That's right. It's an antique. George Washington slept here. Now, look, Joni, George Washington never, never saw California. He, in those days, it, it, was a, it was a Spanish possession. All right, then Xavier Kukite slept here. <laughs> oh, Brad, will you help me? Oh, this is going to be something to see. I won't give you away, but I won't help you, and that's as far as I'll go. Well, I guess it'll have to be far enough. Uh-oh. We'll have to tell the Bennetts we're staying a little while longer. Joni, this time you got yourself in an awful mess. Brad. You don't know how right you are. Hello there. Oh, hello. I'm Joan. Oh. Uh, I'm Helen, and this is Bill. I'm delighted, Joan. Well, how do you do? Oh, I'm so happy that you folks decided to come up. Well, the farm isn't much to look at, but, well, it's so quaint and so... <laughs> antiquish that, well, Brad and I just love it. Say, I'd better go and get Brad and tell him you're here. Uh, have an orange. Oh, thank you. <laughs> The Fairchilds are here. Oh, they are? Well, they sure made it fast. Listen, you talk to them while I change my dress, dear. All right. Uh, listen, and remember you promised not to give me away. Well, sometimes I wish I could, but I'm afraid no one would take you. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. and Mrs. Fairchild? Oh, I, uh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were someone else. Well, I'm Bill Jones, and this is my wife, Helen. You must be Brad. <laughs> That's right. Joan mentioned your name. Oh, she's very charming. <laughs> yes, isn't she? We're the ones who called about your ad for a couple to help with the farm work and enjoy a vacation at the same time. Well, here we are. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> we just love doing chores around a farm. In fact, that's why your ad appealed to us. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> let me uh, show you around the place. Thank you. I, uh, I'm sure that uh, you're going to like it very oh, much. I know we will. Especially after meeting you and Joan. 
She was very friendly to us, considering we were strangers. Oh, she's a, she's a wonderful girl. Oh, oh by the way, did, did she happen to call you Fairchild? No. Well, don't be surprised if she does. It's sort of a pet name. She calls everyone she likes Fairchild. That is, if they're fair and they have their sort of childlike quality. She combines the two. Fairchild. Fairchild. Well, I think that's cute. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> well, oh. have you been entertaining the uh, Fairchild? Uh, yes, Joan, we've had... Uh, Quite a chat. Oh. Have you met the butler? Who? Uh, Bennett, the butler. Oh, oh, Bennett, Bennett. No, he hasn't been around. I uh, think we did meet him when we drove in. You did? Yes, he uh, told us to get our car out of the driveway. Oh. <laughs> yes, that was Bennett. I'm afraid he's getting worse all the time. Oh, why? What's the matter with him? Well, he and his wife have been in our employ for so many years, they've gotten sort of possessive. Sometimes you think we were working for them. <laughs> uh, say, uh, Joan, the uh, folks must be hungry after such a long drive. Uh, when did you instruct the staff to have dinner? Well, as soon as possible. Well, can we help? Just tell us what we have to do. Milk the cows, chop the wood, peel the potatoes. Just name it, we'll do it. Oh, don't be silly. I wouldn't think of you, Fairchild's working. You wouldn't. Oh, no, I know. The work is for other people. No, you folks just stay here and relax. Gosh, this is great. I could stay right here on this farm forever. I'll go see what the cook has planned. That stew is going to be good, Ma. It always is, the fourth day. Uh, listen, folks, I I've got a problem. You ain't decided to leave again, have you? No, it's nothing like that. Uh, our friends, the Fairchilds, have decided to stay for dinner. Oh, that's perfectly all right. We got enough stew for everybody. As long as they work for it. <laughs> uh, listen, you want to hear something funny? <clears throat> this will kill you. I told the Fairchilds that we own this place and that you two are our servants. And I got to keep them thinking that, at least through dinner. You told them that this was your place? Yes, and now I'd like you and your wife to be our butler and cook. What? Does that act like you're a servant? Look, I'll make it worth your while. I'll stay and work on the farm. I'll mow, I'll plow, uh, I mean plow. I I'll pitch in, and I'll do everything. I don't know. We've got another pair of suckers. I mean, another couple coming out from the city. And we've got to find some work for them. Listen, I'll keep them busy just counting the bushel of oranges that I pick. Oh, I'll work like a horse. Even harder than that, I'll work like a tractor. We can do it, too. She's a wiry one. Darn, if it don't sound like a good deal, we'll do it. Oh, Mr. Bennett, you'll never regret it as long as you live. <laughs> Well, all you have to do is roll up the cuffs and, and, and the pants legs, and it'll be fine. <laughs> I said, Mrs. Stevens, how do I look? Well, I'm afraid you don't look like a French maid. Wait, I know how to fix this. Let me get this right here. Mm -hmm. There. Now you look like a French maid. If you ask me, she looks more like a French poodle. Um, huh? Joan! Where did you ever dig up that ridiculous tuxedo? Off a of scarecrow? <laughs> Brad, it happens to be yours. It happens to be mine! I never thought that I'd be wearing one of these things when I was still alive. Yes, well, make sure it don't spill anything on it. Oh, don't worry. I'll take care of it just as if it was my own. <laughs> uh, Joan, uh, by the way, what are you uh, serving the Fairchilds for dinner? Uh, we're having stew. Well, I think you can get away with that. But remember, before dinner, the Fairchilds are used to uh, cocktails, canapes. Know what I mean? Yes, I'm afraid I do, Brad. Well, I tell you, you just keep the uh, Fairchilds busy, and I'll try to get the other things ready. <laughs> All right, dear, and hurry. And don't forget... This is your chance to make a good impression on the Fairchilds. <laughs> the first thing we'll need is a beautiful table. This'll never do. Uh, where are your linens? On the bed. <laughs> uh, clear all this off, please. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, what are you going to do with that window curtain? <laughs> I'm just going to trim them up and improve their appearance. Oh, yeah?
And I'm not going to charge you a penny either. Oh, well, that's different. I just want you to know we ain't a couple of easy marks. <laughs> oh, this is the life. Oh, it's a wonderful to get away from the noise and the traffic of the city. Well, that's a humdinger. Thought you'd like it. Uh, huh? Let's see now. Uh, uh, we'll need something for martinis. Um, have you got any vermouth? Vermouth? What does that mean? It means you haven't got any. Uh, it's a wine. Oh, we ain't got any wine, but we got some Applejack down the cellar. Applejack martinis. Well, it ought to be different. Have you got any olives? No. Uh, well, put an onion in each one. Mm -hmm. Let's see now. Uh, canopies. 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 Well, there's a can of corn, no one can of peas. Oh, a tapioca. We just put these in the oven, blacken them up a little, and use them as caviar. Now, have you got any Melba toast? What's Melba toast? It's that little thin bread. No, all we got's the regular kind. Hmm. <laughs> Melba toast? Uh, not quite. Here. Press it. Press it? Yeah, uh, no starch, please. And when you finish that, do the rest of the loaf. Any <laughs> drinks you wanted? Sorry about the onions, but them the biggest I could find. Oh, no. What's this? I ran out of onions, so I had to use a potato. One thing about this country air, you sure develop an appetite. You must be right. I'm getting positively ravenous. Say, have you got any good candlestick holders? Uh, how's that? Well, it's not elegant enough. Uh, hey. How much do you want for these two pitchforks? Oh, for them two pitchforks? Uh, Five dollars. Okay, it's a deal. I'll give you the money later. Uh, would you get some ice for me, please? Yes, I will. Much wire. I'm a regular cable. <laughs> you know, it's awfully sweet of Joan to take so much dime on dinner for us. That's the way Joan is. Never lets anyone lift a finger. <laughs> she does all the work. Here's the ice. <laughs> you think it'll be enough? Ah, you have large cubes here, haven't you? <laughs> right over there. I'll get the ice for the for the drinks. because you have been in my employ for 20 years, are those little sandwiches that I put on the tray. Where are they? I thought they were leftovers, so I threw them in the stew. Well, you didn't think it could be done, but I did it. Yes, 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 you. <laughs> you did it all right, Joan. <laughs> yep. You know, I think I'll take a walk myself. You want to come along? No, dear, I'm just going to sit here. All right. Hello there, Judge Stevens. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Fairchild, how are you? How are you doing? Fine, thank you. We were a little delayed on route. <laughs> but we just couldn't be so close by without stopping in to see you and to meet Mrs. Stevens. Yes, where is she? 
Well, I'll go get her. I, I know that she'll be delighted to see you. <laughs> Great, isn't it? <laughs> oh, uh, you must be the new couple the Bennetts are expecting up here. When well, are you ready to go to work? Uh, what? You'll have to roll up your sleeves and pitch in. You know the motto around here, nobody eats who doesn't work. I don't understand. Oh, come on now, let's not be naive. You knew the score before you came up here, Chubby. Chubby? Well, I've never been called that in all my life. Oh, you must have been. <laughs> but you know who we are? No, who are you? We are Mr. and Mrs. Fairchild. <laughs> <laughs> and the other... Do you know who I am? No, we don't. Good, let's keep it that way. I I'll go find Mrs. Stevens. Oh, Joan! Uh, Joan! Joan Stevens! Uh, Joan Stevens! Here's a familiar situation. This big ham just won't fit in your refrigerator. So nothing to do but move a shelf. Now that's not easy with old-style pull-out shelves. First, you have to take all the food off the shelf. Oh, watch it. That always happens, doesn't it? Next, you reach in and release the shelf. Then pull it out. Now, put the shelf in its new position. And finally, you have to replace the food. All that bother just to put a ham in the refrigerator. But what a difference with these new revolving shelves in General Electric's big refrigerator freezer. If the ham won't go in, simply touch this button Turn the shelf completely around, like this, and each turn moves it down a quarter of an inch. Turn the other way, it would move up. There, and you didn't have to unload the shelf or remove it. These new GE revolving shelves bring all the food right out in plain sight and easy reach. Nothing can get lost on them, and they hold so much food. For example, here's the old-style shelf used in last year's model. And this is the new GE revolving shelf. See, it actually gives you 8% more space. Let your GE dealer show you this 12 cubic foot General Electric refrigerator freezer with revolving shelves. They're another reason you'll always be glad you bought a GE. And when Joan mistook you for the pear childs, I, I didn't bother to correct her. After all, she had it coming to her for pretending to be what she isn't. <laughs> well, there was no harm done. And your wife is a lot of fun. Uh, that she is, that she is. I sure wish she was here now. <laughs> Mr. Bennett, couldn't I rest? Sorry, a deal is a deal. <laughs> Joni, Joni, what are you doing with that hat with the, with the ears sticking out of it? Well, if I'm going to work like a horse, I might as well look like one. <laughs> Thanks, folks, for letting us visit you in your homes tonight. And just between us, gee, GE appliances are wonderful. See your GE dealer. He's pretty wonderful, too. Good night. I marry Joan. Seen in tonight's cast were Sam Hearn, Minerva Eureka, Gladys Hurl, Bud Paul Power, Lillian Sayre, Frank Gersel, and Margie List. I, Mary Joan, starring Joan Davis, is brought to you each week by General Electric, makers of the most preferred appliances for the home. Remember, you'll always be glad you bought a GE. I, Mary Joan.